Hey, this is Dave Sander from Midwest Outdoors. I'm with my buddies, Mickey Johnson and Dan Sura, and we're off on an adventure in north central Minnesota. We're fishing a tributary to the Mississippi River. The water's very low, too low even for Mickey to bring his jet boat up here. So we're gonna do a different mode of transportation. Yeah, and we're gonna be stopping along the way. We're gonna be hitting certain little pockets of water. With the water being so shallow, we'll pick out certain uh, back eddies, things like that. It'll be very good, it'll be interesting. We'll catch topwater fish and, you know, regular streamers and some of the and, other equipment. And we're doing it all in one person pontoons. It's a new one for Dan and I. Mickey's well versed in Western trout fishing this way. We're gonna use it for Minnesota smallmouths. You know, smallmouth bass are object oriented critters. In other words, in a small river, and in many rivers, you're looking for boulders, you're looking for logs, you're looking for brush, and especially undercut banks. Now the thing about smallmouth bass is that when the water is high, they're gonna be real tight to the cover, and when it's low, they'll tend to move out into the main river channel a little bit. But when you're looking at casting to smallmouth, you wanna be accurate. You wanna put that bait an inch from shore if you can, if it's an undercut bank. It's gonna make all the difference in the world whether you get bit or not. One of my favorite baits for smallmouths during the summer months is a prop bait. And these are absolutely deadly on smallmouths. And one of the little tricks that you can use to trigger a fish on this bait is instead of the uniform cadence of stroke, rest, stroke, rest, stroke, rest, let the blade just spin in the current and if the fish is circling and looking underneath, because they tend to follow it out, a smallmouth bass will follow baits out from the shore, and you want to trigger that fish before you just reel it in, just let it float and let that little blade spin, and bang, you're going to get bit. Well, you know, when you go on one of these types of floats and you're out on a small river, and you're going to be on the water for a good amount of time, and you aren't going to be able to get on and off. And you can't carry as many things, but you need to carry some things with you. So you can readily change out lures or flies. So you can also replace line. Bring extra line just in case you get stripped off and you can't go back and do anything else with it. You want to make sure you bring some food with you, some snacks, and plenty of water. Because if you get caught out on a hot day on one of these rivers without water, you're going to become dehydrated and it isn't going to be good for you. You need to make that difference and think ahead a little bit. One of the things that I like to do if I'm fishing a new stream or river or sometimes even a lake is to be able to just reach down, pick up a rock, look at the bottom side of the rock, and be able to see things like this is a small leech that was stuck on the bottom of the rock. The other things that you commonly find are like um, case caddis, you know, there's like a little caddis case and the caddis is inside of that and it pulls up everything around it. But a lot of times you'll find such a variety of things that it gives you a good idea of what you might use to catch, whether it be panfish or even, you know, to imitate some of the bait fish that these smallmouth are feeding on. But it makes a difference to stop and take the time, even look in a spider's web alongside a stream so you can see what's in there. River tackle is very basic. You don't need five and six rods and reels. You can generally make the trip with two rods. And number one, a bait casting outfit. Seven foot medium action spooled with 10 pound suffix will do the job for all your top water fishing. When it comes to the second rod, I like a throwback rod and a lot of times I'll throw a grub and this is a seven foot medium action rod just spooled with 10 pound suffix. These two rods and reel combos will cover most river situations. Now, if you're fishing heavy cover, you're gonna to wanna to put a braid on here. However, here's your tackle box. Keep it simple, folks. You don't have to bring a 20 pound bag of tackle on midsummer smallmouth fishing. For spinning, I like grubs. And here's a 360 search bait by Storm. And one of my all-time favorites, as I mentioned earlier, the old prop bait. And I also carry a spinner bait. Keep it simple, you'll catch a lot more fish. Yeah, it's really nice when you get down to some of these stretches on the river when things are, you know, 
remote enough, but you know, you, you take them when you can get them and you get nice small mouth hitting on top and sucking in your presentation. Come on, big boy. That's the way to end the day. We had a really good day today. And while I fished here with you guys before out of the boat, I've never done it out of a one-person pontoon before. This was a lot of fun. It's really an up close and personal way to get to know the river and to fish in accessible areas. So Mickey, I want to thank you. I'd shake your hand, but you're busy holding up the boat. So. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to expose you to it. Very good. For, for myself, for Dave Sanda, Dan Sura, and Mickey Johnson, for Midwest Outdoors, stay tuned.